In the first course, you saw alpha and beta, which come out of an equation like this. A fund's return, or specifically its return in excess of the risk-free rate, can be broken down into three components. There is the fund's exposure to market-wide factors, which is determined by the fund's betas on those factors. The exact number of factors is somewhat a matter of taste. I'm just saying n factors here. Then there's the fund's alpha, which is the per dollar value added by the fund's management. And finally, there is other risk, which I'm representing with this epsilon here. This turns out to be a very useful framework for thinking about equity fund management because when you get down to it, the active managers are selling alpha and the indexers are selling beta. Now, in the money management context, lots of things count as beta. Originally, beta was simply market risk, but now it is a more general term that refers to any risk that is attainable with minimal effort. If a client simply wants exposure to some asset class, whether this is equities, corporate bonds, commodities, treasury bonds, or whatever that client is looking for, that's beta. The client has made a top-level decision to allocate to different asset classes and now wants you to deliver that return of that asset class at a reasonable price. That's beta. But if the client wants exposure to not just an asset class, but instead any simply trading rule that doesn't require any special skill or research, we still call that beta. For example, the client wants just small stocks or large stocks or long small stocks and short large stocks or long stocks that went up last year and short the stocks that went down. This is all still beta. So when we call a return beta, we're saying that this is a return that anyone could get without any special input or insight or ability. Alpha is the opposite. Alpha is the value added by special inputs, insight, and ability. If I claim to be delivering alpha to my clients, I'm saying that due to some special advantage, I deliver more expected return than my beta risk would imply. 